What is going on guys? My name is Lexus and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a video that a lot of you have requested and that is on our 900 horsepower 2018 Ford F-150 V8 supercharged 4x4 of course. And what does it take to get it to run low 6 in the 8th and high 9s in the quarter mile? I did all the math. I have literally wrote down everything that it took to do this build and it took about a year or so of a lot of work, a lot of money to make it happen but it's so worth it when this thing pulls up and takes everything everyone's money it is just an awesome feeling and for the most part it still drives and runs like a stock truck uh besides the of course the uh, slicks on the front and rear and some uh, nice looking weld wheels but without further ado guys let's get this video going now a lot of you gonna ask why did it take you a year to build this truck man and i'll be honest i have never seen part shortages and back ordered on parts as bad as it was for the last year or so we all know about the chip shortage and everything going on in the, in the car industry and it's really hitting high performance parts as well so it's something i never thought of about it's something you need to consider when you're doing it because you know whatever time frame you think you're gonna set for yourself or your shop is gonna set for you you probably need to double it man and be realistic of how long it's gonna take before we do this whole video I just want to say guys if you like stuff like this if you like you know 900 horsepower f-150s Supras JDM products we're about to build that to like 850 horsepower a drag race monster for my wife we have of course a Z01 that we just purchased as well that's gonna be about a, a thousand horsepower vehicle and there's a thousand horsepower Dodge Durango Hellcat there as well boys ladies and gentlemen all we do is race on this channel so i think you're really going to enjoy it drop a comment like and of course subscribe and uh just catch up with all the action that we got going on the season never ends here in north carolina there's always something happening and we got four by four and all-wheel drive vehicles man we can race a day night a winter summer it does not matter first things first why did i do a whipple supercharger on my f-150 5.0 instead of going twin turbos like everybody does because i love superchargers man i'm a big supercharger fan that's why three of our vehicles are supercharged and we're gonna start messing with a little bit of turbos and uh, and see what that does for our channel as well but whipple i love the sound of a whipple uh vehicle i had a 5.0 the mustang that was whipple before amazing manual uh six speed uh, i was like a 2015 that thing was a complete monster and my buddy's actually a local whipple supercharger dealer um he works for ford as well so it's pretty cool he got me a really good deal on one i am gonna drop his link down below his youtube channel is called later hp all he does is mess with wild ride that I've never even considered doing. Definitely check out his channel after this and I think you're gonna love it. And if you need a Whipple, hit him up as well. He can find you one for Mopar, Ford, Chevy, it does not matter. If they make it, he can get it for you and pretty quickly, I'll be honest with you. We did this build in three separate stages. So right now we're gonna talk about what we have done already, what we're gonna do next, of course, and what is uh, what are we missing? Because there is a few things that we still need to add on to make this thing run even better. But again, uh, money is, uh, it took a lot already to get to this point. So we went with the Whipple stage one that we purchased because well I want the most power I could get out of this motor safely now one thing and I hope you hear me right now don't skip this part if you are messing with the 5.0 coyote motor before you do anything I don't care if you're keeping it uh, naturally aspirated you need to do the oil pump gears and crank sprockets in the video that I posted of us actually installing the Whipple we dropped the uh, oil pump gear and that thing after like one drop cracked and the second drop completely split in half it is such a brittle piece in the motor it is the weakest link link in it from the beginning and you need to do it so both of those pieces cost right around 330 dollars the whipple cost right around 8200 for stage one now even though we did the whipple install and crank sprockets ourselves i am going to include the labor charge on those as well because for the most part a lot of people will not know what they're doing i didn't know what i was doing i'm, I'm just a youtube certified mechanic but my buddy igor definitely helped with that so uh, i'm going to put the price of what it would have charged the shop to install it which would have been 750 dollars for the whipple install and about a thousand dollars to do the uh crank sprocket and old pump gear just to do the whipple install old pump gears and crane sprockets it costs around ten thousand two hundred eighty dollars now that is to get it to 650 wheel horsepower so that is stage one that uh, even shows on the whipple page and 650 on that truck is no joke i mean four wheel drive two wheel drive it does not matter it is a scary ride especially if you're still on stock suspension so stage one was just to get more power of the truck stage two was the suspension work i don't care if you have a three thousand horsepower Camaro, Mustang, Ford, truck, it doesn't matter, any vehicle, but if your suspension cannot put that power down, what's the point? You are literally useless on the street and a drag strip as well. The next thing I knew we had to do was lower the truck because this was a grandpa truck with 6,000 miles, even though it was a 2018, it was baby by somebody. Here's a video of what it looked like stock. The next step was suspension work, which we did locally at a, a suspension shop because I personally don't know anything about suspension. I'm not even gonna try to act like I know. We did everything we could to make sure this thing was gonna right, uh, drive correctly 
So we have a five inch drive shaft from driveline one because the first thing you wanna do is put a thicker drive shaft. The rest is gonna look like a Twizzler once you're done with that, putting that much horsepower through the whole drivetrain. That was about a $985. Then we uh, did the diff brace, which you absolutely need to do because the amount of shock, even doing like a burnout before you take off that you can feel and how the truck bounces, it, there's a lot of stress that goes through the driveline. So you need that diff brace to reduce as much of that shock going through the driveline as possible. Like I said, the VAS diff brace was about $200. We also did the VAS 3.5 street kit or the drop kit. So that's what you're seeing here, three inches in the front drop and five inches in the rear. So to really lower it and that costs about $1,185. That includes the Viking shocks in the rear as well and the relocation kit. So the way to make the suspension work is you literally take the rear leaf springs, everything, everything gets rotated upside down, right? So if the truck is sitting up to make it lower without cutting stuff and really doing a lot of welding is you literally just flip everything in reverse and it drops it like this truck sits about three inches off the ground and i live in the mountains so it's a little bit of a wild ride on the highway especially if you hit a bump or something you you do uh, end up scraping a little bit and seeing sparks fly but it works very well at the track now we also did the vas traction kit with that so we did get the links uh that was about 410 dollars absolutely needed to be able to really launch into a, a a good hook and and take off at the track now in order to make the suspension work very well and actually hook you need tires and wheels so we did the uh, welds ventura sixes 17 by 10s in the front they look amazing i love it and of course we did develop the ventura six uh in the rear as well 17 by 10s but those are bead locks because i am planning this whole build around 1200 wheel horsepower. We're getting there, but I know that at some point you gotta make sure that there's no slippage even tire on the wheel or anything like that, which I know it takes a lot more horsepower than 900 to make it happen. So the wheels themselves was $2,920 just to buy the set. Now we do have the Mickey Thompson ET Street R's 305 45-17s front and rear for the best traction you can get. Love these tires, I run them on all of my cars. And the tires alone, first off, were near impossible to find, but when I did find them, it was uh, $1,533 for four of those so a little bit up there but the prices are still going up at the end of the day this is a just a, a work truck vehicle right this is an xl which is like the lowest trim level it's got nothing on the interior but a small little two inch screen so it wasn't designed to run what we do but whenever you drop this truck to a three five front and rear there's a few things you'll need to do to make sure the camber does not go like this one thing a lot of people don't know is you need to get the ihc upper control arms which were about 430 dollars because you need to adjust and actually level the um the camber out to make sure it's not sitting awkwardly because you're just literally sagging the truck so much down to the ground. Foam factory, this doesn't have an LSD in it. It won't roast both tires and won't do any of that. And you're gonna blow that diff pretty quickly. So we did do the 8.8 Yukon uh, rear track lock, which was about $690 installed as well to make sure that we can do a proper burnout. It can hold the power down and not blow anything in the rear end. Another thing a lot of people don't know is when you run these 17 inch uh, bead locks or any kind of wheel in the front, your front uh, caliper will actually rub on the rear side of it. I had no idea. There's a company called Bora, B-O-R-A, that actually makes spacers for these type of wheels. So I think it's, uh, I wanna say 10 or 15 millimeters what you need to run to just to clear it enough, not to rub the backside of the uh, weld wheels. So any 17 inch wheel that you try to fit on here, you're gonna have an issue unless you run a spacer. And yes, we do drag racing with four high and four low launches with spacers on the front. And for the most part so far, no issues whatsoever. So this truck is amazing and I love what it's been able to do. To install all those parts, it costs about $1,000 or so so with alignment as well because at the end of all the suspension work you want to make sure it's done right so it cost us right at uh, $9,400 to get this whole suspension kit done I know it sounds like a lot guys but I get it to, to spend 10,000 on a Whipple kit sounds great but if you can't put that 650 wheel horsepower down correctly what's the point so that brought the total out to $18,753 just to make sure this truck can hook and do what it's supposed to do at the strip or on the street correctly without any really safety issues. You know us guys, 650 horsepower, I don't care what it's in is never enough, right? I definitely wanted to get it as close to a thousand wheel as possible. That, that's when it gets expensive when you want high horsepower because it wasn't designed from factory. So the next part, 
is where the money really got dropped. The Whipple kit, everything to this point on, the suspension work only took about, I would say two weeks after I bought the truck. I bought it, two weeks later, we were already installing the Whipple kit and suspension. So within a month, I was like, look, this is not enough. So I contacted my buddies at Mass Acceleration Motorsports in Charlotte who work on all of my vehicles. I don't care if it's a Chevy, Ford, Dodge, they do it all. So I'm gonna drop a link to their website down below, hit them up. They've done this obviously now, so they know exactly how to make this work and how to do it correctly, what parts to have and uh, make you one fast for truck or whatever you want done so so I dropped the truck off and I was like John I need more power I need a lot more power and they're like all right man well what are you thinking I was like look man end goal is about 1200 wheel I don't know where the number came from but I'm trying to run an eight second in the quarter mile which four by four is already near impossible and he said look we're gonna build it the right way we're gonna do it right we're gonna do this in stages we needed more stuff to get more power out of the vehicle so we got the stainless works uh, one and seven eighth long tube headers I did not want to do a full exhaust I I hate loud exhausts unless it's really necessary I try to keep them uh, running as quiet as possible I'd rather hear the supercharger whine over anything else plus I live in a neighborhood which this thing is clearly parked at and my neighbors already don't like me uh, the headers themselves I think it came with the white pipe as well was $1,800 I didn't want to do trans work just yet but I knew I needed a circle detour converter right you want to be able to lock in and and launch uh, correctly without really putting too much stress on the transmission so that cost $2,000 as well and we did a uh, UPR catch can which is always a good idea when you're doing forced induction just to be able to keep track of how much oil is really getting uh, bypassed and pushed back so that was like $370 now the injectors like I told you they're ID 1340s man these are massive injectors I didn't need to do 1300s yet I could have got away with a thousand cc so right now at like 900 wheel this truck is only running I think like a 30 or 35 percent duty cycle so they're not even maxed out nowhere near maxed out injectors and the whole fuel system the fuel system is set up for 1200 wheel already ready if we wanted it if the truck was ready but it's not then we had to do the throttle body the which was nine hundred seven dollars I bought one off of Facebook marketplace got completely juked and uh, that sucked so I got ripped off there so I had to buy one for nine hundred dollars and I spent three hundred for another one and then of course the fuel system itself cost about three thousand dollars we do run the four triple fuel pump with the return fuel system everything is done correctly on here to make sure that this thing is set up like I said for 1200 wheel that cost about three thousand dollars so with labor with all the tuning that was done from Mass Acceleration Motorsports to have everything installed cost right at $18,069. It racked up a lot quicker than I expected, but turns out uh, a lot of the parts don't really fit correctly and they had to make the custom fuel system and return lines and everything like that. It doesn't really come in a kit, not to mention the long tube headers, which by the way, anybody that's installing them, you're gonna have to do some custom work to make them fit. So it's not a direct fit like I thought it was. So it took a little bit, uh, actually a lot to make those headers work on there, but we did need to make it happen. So with the uh, shop bill for Mass Acceleration Motorsports, which brought the truck up to about I think uh, 800 or so wheel, 850 wheel horsepower. It costs out the door with everything suspension. To this point, we're at $36,822. We're close to 40 grand. Uh, but at this point, it's been eight months of sitting in the shop waiting for parts and everything. So right now, this truck is tuned by All Motor Labs. I'm gonna drop a link down below. I'm telling you, you building an F-150, I don't care anything, 5.0, hit these guys up. Instant message response. You can call them, dude. They are ready to help you guys out. Then I just going to take your money and send you one file a week and then you hope they can respond fast enough these guys got this thing retuned from another tuner like within i would say 24 hours um as soon as you sent the file i would upload it get it uh to adjust make sure things running good and i mean dude guys this thing is just running like a monster man zero to 60 well below three seconds of course 60 foot at the track is like 142 was the best one i had and we're still adjusting suspension one thing you need to know whenever you're going to the horsepower where we're at now which is about with a 3.0 pulley and we are running a k 6900 rpm belt it's a gates belt with a 3.0 pulley you want to run that belt or even a little bit tighter if you want to but we are running at 17 pounds of boost which is around 900 wheel horsepower 900 100 wheel horsepower so if you do the 20 percent drivetrain loss you're, you're you're well over a thousand at crank man from a 2018 f-150 that was babied for the last four years of its life and then i got it within a year this thing is hurting a lot of feelings now to make it look as sexy as it 
it does right here we did do a little bit of aesthetics work so as you can tell the headlights are done the grill is done rear tail lights are done as well so there's a lot that we um, did to make this truck kind of look different look uh, nicer than others bed cover of course for aerodynamics now we do have an oem raptor steering wheel as well because these trucks work truck it's got like a shifter by the column it's horrible so there's no downshifting no paddles to be able to do roll racing so we did have a uh, raptor steering wheel that we bought from deviated designs i want to say and it does have a harness that comes with it plug and play harness you don't have to cut any wires all the buttons on the steering wheel everything works so that total with the headlights with all the aesthetic work was about two thousand dollars so now we're up to thirty eight thousand eight hundred twenty two dollars spent on this truck that i purchased for thirty eight thousand dollars so i I spent the same amount that this truck is worth in parts to get it to 900 wheel horsepower. You know, it, it didn't hit me, right? Because you do this in stages and I like it that way because it doesn't, you know, you don't see a bill like this and be like, yeah, forget that, I'm not doing it. So doing it in stages hurt less, but now when you're doing the whole total, that's a lot of money. But I'm so happy that I did it because this is something completely different. I'm never getting rid of this truck. So now that we're talking about what's done to this truck, here are some clips of what it has done at the track. Also, we've done some roll racing and we just won a thousand dollars against a 2022 g80 or one of those really new bmw m3s full bolts on on e gap that guy like it was standing still man put bus links on that guy so this thing uh this thing is just something else watch these videos man I, I know i know believe me a lot of people don't believe it they were bashing this truck left and right until they started seeing at the track and every person that's there is always talking about it now and they love to see it run i do too i'll be honest man so again this is like i feel like a really new platform for uh, youtube for just out there man not a lot of content on these f-150s and quite honestly anybody can pick one up for 40 grand now how far you want to take it on the power level that's totally up to you now at this point i'm going to be completely clear here so everybody hears me so doesn't go and build their own f-150 then tell him Lexus he told him to do that and now my transmission blew up transmission is the next weakest link my tuner has told me multiple times at this point that I'm playing with fire and I need to go ahead and build a trans so that is what we're going to be doing next we need to build the clutches on this thing first and second gears upgrade the valve body as well so that's going to cost about 5500 bucks and at that point we can consistently and safely run almost a thousand wheel because the next limiting factor will be of course the engine itself so the engine to get to 1200 wheel if i send my motor back in uh, rpg motors quarter me around i think seven thousand dollars to do the job if i send my uh block there for them so it's a core charge pretty much and they'll put a built motor that's capable of doing 1200 wheel so for seven thousand dollars plus 55 to six grand on the transmission we are almost at 1200 wheel the next limiting factor will be of course we need another power adder which i am thinking to do nitrous not a lot of people mess with it i have never messed with nitrous i have never even pressed the nitrous button in my life i've never filled the nitrous bottle before i have no idea how to react or what it will do at the track next year i really really want to hit that 1200 wheel in the eight second and a quarter mile and i'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen guys so so if you want to get your truck to 900 wheel you are going to be looking around forty thousand dollars or so you can save some money if you're uh, you know covering your labor yourself but god it's, it's a lot of labor it's a lot of custom fittings and and parts that you need to do a lot of phone calls to tuners to shops it's just a lot of work so i'd rather pay somebody so i could just enjoy this once it's done and i know it's done right so at this point we have so many locked in races already we're going to do cash days garage racing stuff like that big events if you want to see that if you want to follow on this truck definitely subscribe to this channel guys the name of this truck is going to be freight because it just keeps freaking pulling and it's one 
heck of a ride. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your lives, enjoy your trucks. If you have any questions about builds or you need some guidance or assistance, hit me up on Instagram and I will respond to you pretty quickly and be able to tell you what I think you should do. Now, I'm not no expert. Like I said, I am YouTube certified. <laughs> But for the most part, I've, I've uh, hit a lot of uh, barriers. I've done a lot of mistakes, so I can tell you what to do and what not to do safely. But thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your lives, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace.